Uh, Victoria, I would have, I guess I'd have uh, energy prices. I guess I'd have M2 growth. I guess I'd have fiscal spending. Uh, I guess I'd have the reopening of the pandemic and labor-related issues with participation rates. Um, and I guess I'd have the Putin price hike uh, in there as well. But how many of those are directly addressable by raising interest rates? And what do you really think is at play here for how systemic or long-lasting the, under, uh, the underpinnings of inflation are? Well, I mean, Joe, we know that raising rates is really all they can do is affect demand, and demand has stayed somewhat consistent. You guys had a B of A analyst earlier talking about consumer spending and how that's continuing to do well. I think when you look at energy, part of that headline number, I think we're going to continue to see demand go higher. We're going into the winter months. Um, we have sanctions that are going on to oil and gas on Russia out of Europe the first week of December. You have China beginning to open up. I think there's a lot of demand out there. So when you look at all these different components, maybe you can say headline or um, headline CPI has peaked, but I don't think you can say individual components have peaked. Goods prices have come down. Services we're steady, but you look at food away from home, that was up 0.9% month over month, Joe, and that's a proxy for wage growth. So it flips us over to the labor market to see what we're having there. Lots of different elements that I think we can say, yes, it was a good number. I don't think it changes the Fed's path whatsoever at this point in time. I think we go 50 basis points in December and probably one or two 25 basis point hikes in the beginning of next year. What do you think caused it? Uh, Lindsay, and uh, it's overstated to say the arsonist is now trying to put out the fire, but was, was the Fed partly responsible for, uh, for really bringing the highest inflation in 40 years? It takes a while to, to do that, or was it really just external factors? Well, it was a combination of both. What we did see is the supply side components of the inflation equation certainly ignite as international policies still at this point are leading to supply chain disruptions and limitations in terms of access to parts and materials. But we also saw the demand side fueled as a result of monetary and fiscal policies fueling the market, flooding the market with trillions upon trillions of dollars. Now, this is the, the problem that the Fed is facing. As the Fed raises rates, that's intended to tap down demand, tap down investment, leading to slower growth and more benign inflation. But raising the federal funds rate does nothing to address the supply side of the equation. It does nothing to change China's zero COVID policy. It can't force resolution in terms of Russia and Ukraine. So this is going to leave inflationary pressures arguably much more elevated for a longer period of time, even as the Fed continues to raise rates. This is going to complicate the picture. Now, yesterday's report certainly was a step in the right direction, suggesting that peak prices may be behind us. But said another way, with the Fed applauding earlier policy initiatives in terms of lowering headline inflation slightly, with 375 basis points of tightening already under their belt and inflation still near a four-decade high, this simply reinforces the notion that there is significantly more work to be done, that more rate hikes need to occur in order for the Fed to reinstate price stability just on the demand side of the equation. That's kind of the conundrum, isn't it, Steve? The Fed giveth and the Fed taketh away, but when it taketh away, it, it can't control all those other things that, uh, that, that happened not, that was out beyond their control. We can't blame you know, we can't blame Russia. We can't blame yeah. uh, COVID in, in China. But they also can't fix that with, with their tools either. No, but um, first of all, I think, I think that's a really important point, right, which is that, um, you know, the Fed uh, pro almost certainly stayed too long and maybe did too much. But um, once that happened, there were some other factors that went along. And I think the biggest mistake by the Fed and one that ought to inform policy in the future is to adjust policy to the fiscal regime as it comes in. Uh, both Trump and the um, uh, Biden administration did a lot of fiscal stimulus. And uh, the extent to which uh, that was out there, the Fed didn't seem to plan or react to it. But, Joe, I want to answer your other question in, in a slightly different way, because you, you posit the inflation issue as being sort of mechanical, that, you know, if the fiscal stimulus goes away and the policy goes away, then inflation goes away. It's not quite the process the Fed sees, I think. I think if you think about 
maybe uh, I know you're a science minded guy there. Think about when you give something a push in a vacuum. It keeps going for a long time. And the big concern at the Fed here is that inflation takes on a momentum that is indeed divorced from the fundamentals that caused it. And I think that's the reason why you have some of the hawks on the Fed that suggest, hey, we got to do more here. We got to um, uh, get in front of this thing such that that momentum doesn't go on, even if some of these things cure themselves. Look, if China opened up tomorrow, fabulous. If the Russia war, Ukraine war ended tomorrow, that would be wonderful. Uh, but I'm not sure all of that is enough to get rid of the inflation that is setting in, uh, set into the economy.